You're in a conversation and someone says, pro-lifers just want to force their religious views on everyone else. They don't really have a good reason to oppose abortion. What would you say? Dismissing opposition to abortion as religious ideology is intellectually lazy. There are rational arguments against abortion, and those who oppose abortion make them often. So, when abortion advocates dismiss arguments against abortion, remember these three steps. Step number one, formally state the case against abortion. Here's one of the very best summaries of the overall argument against abortion. Premise one, it is wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human being. Premise two, abortion intentionally kills an innocent human being. Therefore, in conclusion, abortion is morally wrong. Clearly stating the case against abortion can prevent critics from distorting and dismissing it. Plus, it will keep you on message. Step number two, Defend the case against abortion by clearly stating the reasons for your pro-life position. Did you know that you can defend the main aspects of the argument against abortion in less than a minute? There are two aspects of this defense. First, an embryo is a distinct, living, whole human being. And second, the differences in size, level of development, environment, and dependency are not sufficient reasons to justify killing an innocent human being. Here's an example of how you might defend opposing abortion. I am pro-life because it's wrong to intentionally kill an innocent human being. The science of embryology establishes that from the earliest stages of development, you and I were distinct, living, and whole human beings. Embryos are not part of another human being, like skin cells on the back of a hand. Embryos are already whole, living members of the human family that have not yet matured. And there's no essential difference between the embryo you and I once were and the adults we are today that would justify killing us at that earlier stage of development. Differences of size, level of development, environment, and degree of dependency are not good reasons for saying you could be killed back then, but not now. The beauty of this one minute soundbite is its brevity. But what if instead of 60 seconds, you only got six seconds? Simply say this, I'm pro-life because it's wrong to intentionally kill innocent human beings. That single sentence is enough to provoke plenty of discussion and will allow you to further unpack the pro-life argument. Step number three, establish ground rules for further discussion. Once the pro-life argument is presented, critics have work to do. To dismiss this argument as simply religious is a dodge, and it's okay to point out the difference between dodging an argument and refuting an argument. Arguments are either true or false, valid or invalid. Calling an argument religious misses the point entirely. If an argument can be refuted with evidence or a counter argument made for abortion, then the conversation can continue. Otherwise, the case has been made against abortion and you've given them lots to think about. Pro-lifers aren't imposing their religious views any more than abolitionist Christians. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. often appealed to faith and religious belief. Rather than imposing, we're proposing a more just and better way in hopes we can persuade our fellow citizens to protect the most vulnerable in our society. So, the next time you're challenged to defend your pro-life views on hostile turf, remember these three steps. One, formally state the case against abortion. Two, defend the case against abortion by clearly stating the reasons for your pro-life position. Three, Establish ground rules for further discussion. For What Would You Say, I'm Megan Allman.